Hey guys, it's Christy and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we're going to be reviewing the new Huda Beauty Cool Matte Obsessions Palette. So before we get into it, I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel before you leave. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy and let's get into it. All right, I am so excited for today's video. I love reviewing new palettes. And Huda Beauty is one that I try to review everything, but sometimes I just take a pass. But I could not pass on the new Cool Matte Obsessions. She did actually release two of these. There is this one here, and there is also the Warm Matte Obsessions. I did not pick that one up because, first of all, she raised her price on these. But second of all, I just feel like I genuinely have all of those shades in the Warm Palette. So it was just really redundant for me. And the same may be true for this, but we're going to see. So again, this is the Cool Matte Obsessions. This does come in that soft touch matte packaging. I love that. These now retail for 32 US dollars or 41 Canadian. So very, very steep, especially for nine shades. So this is made in China and has a 24 month shelf life. So I love the packaging. Looks very, very pretty, very true matte. And then this is the inner palette. Very, very pretty. Again, with the matte packaging, it is just their hard plastic shell and the matte on the front here. And this is what the inside looks like. So you do get nine different shades and you get two cream shades in here, which I feel like is becoming so common in eyeshadow palettes to have cream shades in here. I will say I often credit Huda Beauty as doing texture better than anybody else. She really is the queen of texture in my opinion. However, you don't get that with her nine pan. To get a really great range of texture, she usually has those in her larger palettes, but I am excited to see some cream shades in, in this one. So we do get two of these. These are shades that I am going to really, really love. So let's just get to putting these on the eyes, and then I want to look at some comparisons. So I have already primed my eyes with my Urban Decay Primer Potion and just set it down with a little bit of powder, and I think I'm just going to start with this more muted pink shade here. I just want to use this one in the crease just to kind of slowly build this up. I love a good all matte look, but I very, very rarely create them, which is kind of funny. I just, somehow my fingers always find their way into a shimmer shadow. I don't know what it is. Okay, I think I want to take this first cream shade here, this light purple, and I think I want to start adding that to the outer portion of the lid. Seems to be blending quite well with the other shades. I'm just going to bring it in a little bit more in that lid. I think I'm actually just going to drag that shade all over the lid really lightly though. Very, very softly, but I think that's definitely what I want to do. Okay, that honestly blended way better than I expected. I think I'm going to stick with the same brush and then go into that other shade. That middle one, that first cream shade seemed really, really light to me. So I do want to try to deepen up the outer corner. These are playing very, very well with each other. I don't always trust the Huda 9 Pan palettes. I've, I have had bad experiences before, but then last year she came out with the Love Fest palette, which kind of brought my faith back. So I figured we would give this one a shot. And so far I'm not, I'm not mad about it. That's really nice. Then I'm going to go in to this one to further deepen that outer corner. I am definitely doing a lot of unnecessary steps, but I do want to try as many shades as I can. I am always careful not to get too deep with my shadow. I just don't love super deep looks on me personally. So I did just use this one as a little bit of a liner. I should have waited till the end, but I didn't. And I didn't realize I wasn't recording. So unfortunately, I cannot show you this part, but I did do a little liner moment. And now I'm going to take this one all over the lid. I am going to grab a flat brush because I do want a lot of pigment. And I really want this one all over the lid. I really want a really pretty baby pink. I feel like this is probably the same look that everybody's doing with this palette. It was the look that was in the campaign photos, I think. So that's so pretty. I am going to just grab my brush I use for my outer corner just to bring some of that depth back and to mesh these two together. I don't really know that we needed 
both of these light pink shades, but all right. So let me pop off camera. I'm going to pop on some mascara and I will be right back with some comparisons. All right. So let's talk about some comparisons. I do only have three palettes to compare this one to, and I do not have perfect dupes, but this palette is super beautiful. The very first palette that came to mind when I asked myself if I had any cool tone mattes is the Natasha Denona Retro. And there's definitely a lot of similarities with the matte shadows in here. Obviously this one has shimmers too. I will say I do think I still like the Natasha cream to powder formula a bit better. It just seems more pigmented, more buildable, but the ones in the Huda palette are not bad by any means. I just think for comparison's sake, I do prefer the Natasha a little bit more. Let me pop up a photo. You'll see on one side, I have the Huda Beauty palette swatched and on the other, I have all of the closest shades from the Natasha Denona. So I was definitely able to find a lot of similar shades. I wasn't able to dupe the entire palette, but I was able to find a lot of very similar shades. So I thought that was really interesting. I do think if you have the retro palette, you probably don't need this one. I mean, in fairness, the Natasha palette does not have the very baby pinks that are in the Huda, but you might have that in some other palettes. I also compared the palette to the mattes in the Making Mobs palette. So not identical, and I was able to find some similar shades. Um, this is also a nine pan and there is also three shimmers, so I wasn't able to find an identical match, but again, some very similar vibes in here, also lacking that very soft baby pink. Then I chose to look at the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz because Huda does tend to dupe herself a lot sometimes, and these were a lot more different than I actually expected. I was only really able to find four similar shades, so there is that, but this one does have that sort of baby pink shade. This one is definitely a bit brighter, a little bit more vibrant, but at the end of the day, if you create a look with it, you're gonna get a similar vibe. But for that reason, I would say if you have Rose Quartz and the Natasha Denona Retro, you do not need the new Cool Matte Obsessions because you get the baby pink in here, plus you get essentially the same vibe as all of the mattes. So I do think that if you have those two, you could probably pass on this one. One thing I wanted to mention is some of these shades I feel like are a little bit redundant, like the two baby pinks. While they're not identical, this is the one that is in the middle, this is the one in the bottom corner, this one is obviously a bit softer, and this one has a slight bit more of a dusty rose to it, but did we really need both? Probably not. I will say the quality of this one is so good. So while I think if you have retro and rose quartz, you probably do not need this at all, but maybe if you've been eyeing up one or both of them and you just haven't picked them up yet, maybe you do just grab this one because you do get two creamed powders in here and they do perform very, very well. I'm not noticing any creasing or anything like that on the lids. I think so far this looks very, very pretty. I'm actually really happy with how this look turned out. I think the performance of these is great. The mattes perform very well. I've never really known who does mattes to not perform. Typically when I have an issue with a shade, it's probably one of her shimmers but these mattes performed very, very well, and the cream to powder has performed very well. I do think they're beautiful. I think the formulas in here are great. I think the quality is great. I do think it's a really great little palette, and even though I do have some similar things in my collection, I do think it is a bit more unique. The Warm Obsessions would not have been at all unique to my collection, but this one definitely adds a little something. This look has definitely inspired me to play with mattes a little bit more. So I'm just one of those people, my fingers always end up in the shimmers no matter what I do. But I really do like how this matte look turned out. I think it looks really pretty and classy and I really do like it. So I'm very happy with this palette. I think the quality is phenomenal. I did want to bring up some comparisons if you're deciding whether to splurge on this or not. But if you want to, I don't think you'll be disappointed. I think it's a wonderful palette and I definitely can't wait to keep playing with it. I think my look is always pretty much gonna turn out the exact same, but that's okay. So that is it for me today. Let me know down below if you're thinking of picking this one up or maybe you picked up the warm one. Let me know. I love hearing from you guys. So 
so much. If you're new here, I hope you'll consider subscribing before you go. I do upload at least three new videos every single week. Thank you again so very much for watching, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!